Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about the RF Chieftain's progression. Um, as you are seeing from this video, we are capable of running T17 maps with pretty good ease. Um, this character is going to be modified from what you are used to seeing in the typical League Start POBs. And that's because we are using the same setup I did in SSF, which is the Hateful Accuser and Sfallen. Um, together they combine to be very strong. You can combine Sfallen without Hateful Accuser, but I don't have any guides on that, so I can't really like explain the best way to do that. Um, so without further ado, we're going to do the same formatting of previously, but I've updated or upgraded the production a little bit here. So there hasn't been an update video for a few days. Um, I only played for two days. One of the days I only played for like an hour. Um, so you can kind of see the upgrades here. So starting with basically we set up Svalin where we're using shield breaker tattoos. I'll explain this after um, along with fire res tattoos and red nightmare. And then of course the actual Svalin down here. Let's talk about the upgrades leading to there. So I bought myself an Awakened LE Focus. I didn't put an image for this because most people know Awakened Gems are just the stronger version of your regular gem, right? Um, these are always good to grab as early as you can if they're not expensive because you can just level them as you go. There are ways you can like level them with like Beast Theory and stuff, but that doesn't really matter to me. I just, I, I enjoy the, the progression of the character, right? So I like getting the gems early and leveling them. Um, but let's talk about my weapon here. So my weapon over here down below, I just put an image for you. I bought myself a Fractured 22 Dot Multi Scepter for one Divine. Now, a lot of people get confused here because they only care about the Implicit because they, they're not fully aware of how increases in multipliers work. So it's always good to grab yourself a decent Dot Multi roll, typically like T2. And the base it's on, you have to pay attention, right? So you notice this base here, it's a Carnal Scepter. It has 32% Ellie. In no world am I going to pay, you know, an extra four Divines for a Void Scepter or a Crystal Scepter because you're paying a difference of four divines for 8% LE damage, which is like half a skill point, right? Do we call that more like min-maxing or like far later into the game? This is about being efficient with your currency, especially when your character is not crazy strong, right? So anyway, the process goes where you basically buy the Fracture Dot Multi Scepter, you spam alterations until you get that plus one fire. Occasionally you get plus one all spell skill, which is just better, but same, same thing. Then after you have isolated your plus one and your Dot Multi, you go ahead and regal. You're hoping your regal hits a prefix that's not spell damage. Um, spell damage, lightning damage, fire damage, all the same thing. If you guys have ever done the minion craft, you know that the minion damage takes place of the fire damage rule. It's kind of the same here. And then after that's done, um, you pretty much can multi-mod. If you hit a suffix, then you have to actually um, use this here, Ferric Wolf Alpha, which adds a prefix, oops, adds a prefix and removes a suffix. Uh, and then you're pretty much good to go right if you are going to do this make sure that you craft first because when you regal it will be rare so you want to make sure you craft fire damage to prevent the suffix to prefix hitting fire damage and breaking your scepter anyway moving on to the next one so i've got an aoe medium cluster here now the purpose of the aoe medium cluster these are not the same as uh like regular clusters these are specifically for the hateful accuser variant and the reason for it is if you notice asserting dominance and towering threat, don't mind it, it blocking me, the assert dominance gives you 25% AOE if you have killed like four mobs recently or something. It's very easy to maintain with Hateful Accuser. And then towering threat also gives you AOE while giving you life. So between those two nodes, it's 35% uh, AOE, right? The 25 and then the 10. And then if you increase that by getting two, you're now at 70% AOE just from those two clusters, which is actually pretty crazy in my opinion. The way I went about them, I got really lucky. I basically just spammed Purple Life Force um, for Reforge Life and then Exalted. And I did this twice and got them. Very lucky, but it's how I ended up getting them. When I played SSF, I literally just did Reforge Life and we actually like hit it as well. Next up are Jewels. You heard me complaining before that Jewels are kind of a bitch to craft. Uh, and they kind of are. When you can get fractured base jewels, it's not nearly as bad. So here is one of our god tier jewels we hit. I was basically just hitting reforge fire and re and between reforge fire and reforge life, depending on which one I needed more damage or life. So we ended up hitting this god tier jewel. And the reason why it's god tier is number one, it has fire multi. Number two, it has life. Number three, it has max fire res. Um, and then it's got the increase. I'd obviously prefer 
Actually, no, I don't think I'd prefer anything else. That's, that's pretty solid as a jewel. Uh, with this Fallen version specifically, you drop the middle part of the tree to actually lack max fire res. So getting max fire res on jewels is pretty much mandatory unless you have like a mage blood or something. Also here, you can see the damage of the character in a T17 Delirium. Uh, not super impressive, mainly because Katarina is a pain in the ass. Uh, I also need to get some like a new amulet to scale my damage a lot, but it's definitely more than capable of running tier 17 content, right? Katarina just sucks because like if you think of the four other ones, the fortress guy doesn't have any phases, so it's really easy to explode. Katarina is constantly going through phases, spawning adds, and you got to kill the adds. So you're constantly trying to re-trigger more and more explodes versus the other ones, right? Another guy would be like uh, uh, Dodre. Dodre has like three big adds and then like the boss itself. There's no like phases outside of when they, I guess like when Dodre is spawning. Uh, even Sanctum, Sanctum boss, uh, what is it, Citadel maybe? You go in and you like basically get an explode. They go to 50% life. They go invulnerable. They spawn a boss. You one shot the boss and then the boss comes back, right? So Katarina, definitely the slowest of them. I'm sure most people know that, unless they're very high DPS characters. Anyway, though, pretty happy with our jewel there. The jewel pretty much got everything set up on the character. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and speed this through a tiny bit here. Oh, oh, there you go. You can see. Is that her dead already? Oh, no, that's the ad dead. There we go. Yeah, definitely doable. So I'm pretty happy with the character. P17 farming is a breeze. It's just the bosses are a little slow. Again, Katarina specifically is like really, really slow. So that's pretty much it from like the crafting guide. We can go ahead and just go through some other stuff because I didn't screenshot all these jewels here because it's just a pain. This is like the same thing, right? Same process on all of them. Uh, then we have the Svalen, which was 200C. Um, we've got the Fractured Life Regen Helmet. I forgot about this one here. So when you go Svalen version, specifically when you go Hateful Accuser, you're not actually using Fire Trap anymore. Um, because your Hateful Accuser covers your single target. So to replace this, I basically crafted, and this could be way better, right? I just crafted a helmet that essentially is going to give decent armor, which just helps a bit with the little hits. Really high life, um, but more importantly, I needed fire res to help fix my resistance issue. So I was pulling for a big fire res roll with a life roll and a prefix open for plus one gem. I crafted that by basically buying Anger Essences, which guarantee the Fire Res roll, and just essentially slamming until I got a good life roll, uh, and that's pretty much how we went with that. So, pretty happy with that. And then, the huge purchase here was an Awaken in KOE. It was close to five Divines. The reasoning for this purchase is if you notice the giant Ring of RF here, I've actually went up quite a bit, I think, since this clip here. Um, this is very important for hitting all of the adds when Hateful Accuser spawns. Part of the clunkiness of Hateful Accuser is having to run around and try to reach all of the adds, but simply doing this makes it so you just hit all of them. A lot of people are going to ask where a lot of the currency came from. So majority of my currency now comes from selling the one thing I allowed an exception for, which is T17 maps. So an example of like a normal session here, um, I'm getting easily 9 to 10 a day, probably much more. But here is an example of like nine ziggurat maps selling for six plus divines. These are an average of 90 to like 95 chaos each. This is not including any of the currency I've acquired from like Harbinger and other stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just close out of this clip here. And we're going to go ahead and jump. Oh, I already closed out of it. Perfect. All right. So some of the other stuff we've gotten now because we have migrated from essentially the Blight Atlas back to my Harby Beyond. Harvey Beyond is the typical Harvey Beyond you can find on my stream. You can just hit up the Atlas command and find it. But we have farmed a shit ton of things. You can see here we're up to like 200 Ancient Orbs. Uh, we're up to uh, two Fracturing Orbs. Actually, let me get Awakened Pewee trade on. You can see the price of these. So these two Fracturing Orbs are like, what, uh, 11 Divines? These are all just like rough estimates. The Ancient Orbs are 10 Divines. The Annals are close to 5 Divines, right? We're farming Divine Beauty. We're 7 of 12 right now. The reason we are getting Divine Beauty is because we are farming Toxic Sewers and Underground Sea. And I got a Seer here. So I scried Divine Beauty to the uh, Underground Sea. Initially, I was actually selling these one by one because they are worth like a decent amount of chaos. But now that we have our character kind of established, um, we basically can just farm them all up and then turn them in. And that way I don't have to spend gold on this guy, which is really nice. Okay, other than that, let's talk about Svalin 
and hateful accuser. So Svalin is really nice because it allows you to run rippier content and by blocking that damage, you don't take damage at all. The Shaper Shield is really good for an initial starting shield, pretty much all forms of T16 content. But once you get into T17 and Ubers, if you choose to progress that way, Svalin is definitely the better way to go. Okay, so what I put inside my Svalin in this current character, and there is flexibility, is Purifying Flame for permanent Consecrated Ground, Storm Brand, which triggers hits for the Hateful Accuser, and then Life Tap to make sure I can always keep them active. You'll notice that if you look at my tree here, the Svalin version that I'm playing now is coming across the left side and going up rather than through the middle. This is primarily because you don't need Glancing Blows because Svalin is giving you Lucky Block, your goal is to make sure that you are not taking damage from it. It's a very different setup from the uh, Shaper life gain on Block Shield, right? You do overall lose damage because with this setup, um, you have to spec more into Block. You'll see I come down here, I grab as the Mountain, I've got a Mastery. Uh, on top of the Mastery, I've got a Jewel here, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then I also have the investment into Safeguard. But this makes the character, again, feel much more tanky, uh, specifically for like the T17 content. So that's why I've decided to pursue this route. Now, as for this interaction here, this is called Red Nightmare. So the interaction located here is if you notice my block, I'm 68, 68 lucky. And if I remove the Red Nightmare, I go to 45. That's because Red Nightmare states, passives granting fire res or all res in radius also grant chance to block attack damage. So we have Tattooed, Fire Res, which is giving us 2% block, 2%, 3% block per, 3% block per, right? 3% block per, while also doubling as Cold and Lightning Res, while also doubling as Life Regen because of the Fire Mastery. So this setup is very comfy and very cozy. I do like it a lot. It also saved me points on the tree in having to travel somewhere else. Um, this setup is also getting uh, three max attack block and three max spell block, which makes Fallen just feel even more incredible. Now, as for setting up your Hateful Accuser, um, Hateful Accuser is a little tricky. And the reason being is you want to make sure that you penance mark the target. And there will probably be another video expanding on this because a lot of people are not really enjoying the version. But anyway, for penance mark, I'll do a quick little TLDR uh, and then pretty much cut the video here. So... When you penance mark a target here, right, and you get hit, right, did you see how, see how, okay, actually it literally spawned the phantasms and exploded them there, so it's a perfect example. The TLDR, you hit a target, let me turn off Tempest Shield because it's killing everything. You hit a target with the penance mark, then when that mob hits you, you're going to trigger your Svalin. Your Svalin is going to hit the target, creating the phantasms, and then your RF kills the phantasms, which triggers the explode. Does that make sense? That's how the whole thing goes. Now, you'll notice that my AoE is massive, and that's because, remember the Assert Dominance Jewels we were talking about? The Assert Dominance Jewels work really well with this setup because you are constantly killing the Phantasms. So because you're constantly killing the Phantasms, you can now benefit from on-kill mechanics such as Blood Rage. So you can now generate Frenzy Charges, right? So that actually makes Hateful Accuser a little bit more interesting of a ring because it's providing you a means for Frenzy Charge generation on a boss. Furthermore, the 50% reduced effect of curses when paired with either a Rational Doctrine or any form of Consecrated Ground essentially makes you not affected by curses either. So that's kind of cool. The uh, increased ailment duration on you doesn't really hurt us too much because we're not affected by Ignite. We're immune to shock. We are unaffected by chill or freeze. So really, it's just Brittle Sap and Scorch, I believe, which not too big of a deal. Um, some other upgrades I need to pursue, though, is getting a Corrupted Cloak of Flame. Ideally, I think, increase damage and reduce crit damage. And then Corrupted Annihilation's approach, maybe like plus one max endurance charge, movement speed, life. Uh, and my amulet is really bad. Uh, I've just gotten... It's not that I've gotten lazy, it's I've been trying to recombinate an amulet, and I haven't been keeping up with the League mechanic, because this is my third time rebuilding the town. So I kind of just left it alone, and then I lacked dust, so now I have to go, either I can go buy unique items for dust because I'm allowed to do that, or I just have to keep farming and dusting stuff. 
So then I can essentially get the Recombinator Max. And then our goal is to get, I think, a Hunter Amulet with a regular Amulet. Get Fire Multi with regular Multi. Recombinate them together with a good life roll. And try to get like a 100 life double dot multi amulet. The alternative route is going Defiance of Destiny. Because my current amulet provides me with quite literally no damage. Defiance would make me so tanky with T17 content. Although I'm already tanky so I kind of want to pursue more damage. Anyway that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope the new little formatting kind of helped you guys out a bit. Oh, sorry about that <clears throat> but that's about it so hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves before i go and i know a lot of people are going to ask what are you doing with the extra gems that you normally would have for fire trap at the moment uh i pretty much just have flame surge with a level one cast one damage taken and that's so that when the explosion occurs on a boss fight and i take damage flame surge goes off and you just get 25 percent of the ignite as burning ground nothing crazy it's just free damage and then realistically in my helmet here i'd probably do a cast one damage taken steel skin i have those leveling on the side here i just am too lazy to use one chrome on my helmet i was using hex bloom with punishment but it's literally crashing the game with harbinger beyond so i had to stop using it even though it's so nice but anyway sorry for the info dump i hope that this helped you guys out if it did please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Take care, and thanks for watching, everybody.